Hi everyone, welcome back to workshop. I just thought I'd stick on the video camera here. I'm in the middle of another production run on my PDVS2 precision voltage sources and I was just calibrating one of the uh, devices that I'd made all boxed up, PCB all in place and I came across a problem with, believe it or not, the very last unit in the production run and I've taken it out of its case so that I can try and affect a repair and I just thought it's quite an interesting one so I thought I'd stick on the video camera because it's the kind of thing that's pretty useful to have to, to be able to do Basically, the unit works fine. Uh, the only part that doesn't work is the USB. I tried tying it to my PC there to test out the comms from the unit and the USB is just not recognised. It's as if the IC, the US, the FTDI chip here was dead or something. So I did a little bit of investigation and uh, I'll just zoom in and let you have a look. So as I said, this is the FTDI chip here and it basically ties directly to the Type B USB receptacle here that I've got on the board and there is actually five contacts on the underside, you can just sort of see the uh, tracks there going under under the actual receptacle itself. The little pins from the receptacle are actually underneath the socket so if there's any short circuit or anything like that they are quite hard to get to. Not impossible but they are quite hard to get to. So here's a blank board here we can just take a better look here, a closer look. This right hand end track there you can see it coming away off goes onto the capacitor, the other side of the capacitor goes down through a via onto a ground plane on the underside of the board. You can see the track also goes away along here and it goes onto one pin of the IC and then out the other side away off to C84 which again is a, a capacitor. other side of the capacitor is down to ground via, via this uh, battery connector, this is actually a ground uh, terminal. But you can also see that adjacent, one of the adjacent pins on the IC has got a little track coming away off into a via. That's actually a ground connection as well, a zero volts connection as well. So it's entirely possible that that track that we were talking about, that 5 volt USB lines, that sh could be short circuited against that adjacent pin. It won't be short circuit against the, the one on the other side because it's not ground, it's something else. So it could be there. It could be the receptacle going back across here. Um, there's not a ground next to it. That's not a ground connection next to it. That's actually D minus on uh, one of the comms lines. It's not short circuited to that. But if I go back to the actual connector again um, here this, the casing of the uh, connector is tied down to zero volts as, as well and this little back end of the actual receptacle there is at uh, zero volts potential and it's pretty close to the pins, there could be a blob of solder behind I can't actually see and believe you me I've uh, got the magnifying glasses on and I've checked and the, the pins look clear I've had short circuits on these before and it's they're really easy to see not quite so easy to get rid of to, to, to fix but it really you can spot them a mile off and it's actually the same with the pins and the IC it's it's quite easy to see, although it's a fine pitch, you can actually see when there's shorts. Um, but again, I've had a look at the pins, I've actually given them a wee bit of a resolder there, a bit of reflow, and they look and appear fine. And like I said, I've removed the two decoupling capacitors already, they were dead easy to remove and dead easy to put back. So just in case they were short circuited underneath or something like that, I've taken them off, but the short circuit still exists. So where do we go from here? Do I take off the receptacle and have a look and have the pain of putting it back on, considering it's, uh, it's got two big metal tabs at the end that go down to two large pads. That's not going to be easy to do. Do I desolder the IC and have the pain of reflowing that one back on and tidying up the fine pitch? Because uh, of course I can't put this board back into the reflow oven. I'd have to do it manually. So what do we do? Well, what we can actually do is use my six and a half digit Keysight multimeter there to locate the problem. Although it's a dead short um, between that line somewhere and ground, 
uh, I can actually locate it using the multimeter. So let's have a look. So if I first of all null out the meter, it's very important to do that. I'm on the ohms range on the multimeter and I'll just uh, get one a nice big pad there and I'll null it out. A couple of presses here to get it done. There we go, we've nulled it out. So now bring the board back in. If I measure across, let's for instance, let's say C50, the capacitor there, 0 0.0222. I'll do the same on C84. Now it's actually it's quite important that the ground connections are from the ground side of the capacitors etc down on the ground plane are pretty much equal. That is the case in, in this case. So 222 for C50, looking at C84, we're way up at 600 and, well 600 odd. So that's telling me that the short circuit is more, loca is located closer to C50 than it is to C54. So now if I go and measure from that pin on the IC to its adjacent pin where we thought there may be a short circuit could be underneath the IC I don't think so but let's have a look very close there there we go 49484 something like that so you can see that the further I get away from the USB connector the higher the resistance is between that line and ground. So that's telling me that the problem's somewhere over by the by the USB connector. So the next thing I'll do is I'll measure from the USB connector onto its own ground connection on the case. So I'm right on that pin there to there. Look at that, we're way down at 70 something. That's telling me that the problem's on the USB connector. Now I've actually tried reflowing the pins there. As you can see, uh, there's a lot of flux all over the place now. I've actually got the solder wick in there and uh, tried desoldering it. I've put a bit of um, a liquid flux, I've sort of squeezed that into the underside of the connector there, then tried to wick it up and I just can't seem to clear that fault. So here's a brand new connector here and as you can see on the underside there's probably not going to be a short there um, because there's basically plastic void space and there's no metal bracket part of the metal bracket anywhere near it but if you look at the end there there's a folded over part of the bracket there which is at zero, zero volts potential and it gets really really close to all five pins now because this is the underside I can't look on the PCB up into that void there all I've been able to do is stick the st solder wick up there somewhere hoping it's going to suck the short out but Unfortunately, I've been a little bit unlucky and I can't seem to clear this one. Um, there could also be a short, you know, between the pin there and uh, this part of the bracket here, but uh, I don't think so. I can't actually see that one because it's, you know, it's easier enough to see, but um, not the other one. So I think the next stage is I'm going to measure the resistance between the pin here and exactly at this. Uh, bracket here and let's see if it's even lower and if it's really really low resistance then I'm thinking the shorts up in here. So let's get the multimeter in again and check it out. I'll just go across C50, it's the easiest place to check for a general short. Look at that. Cleared. We're way up at 38k now which is probably about right. Across C84 38k. Brilliant, I've cleared the short. The only thing left to do now is uh, put a bit of solder back in those pads, uh, getting close with the soldering iron there and uh, solder them back up, which uh, isn't so easy as well but uh, entirely possible and a lot better than having to remove the connector. So I've connected up a couple of batteries, uh, I haven't bothered putting it back into its case just yet, just in case there's a further problem. So let's switch it on. Boot screen and I'll connect up a USB lead. Oh, here we go. 
Oh, I heard the PC do something. So let's take a look at it. And yep, yeah, we got a COM port, so I'll just zoom out a little bit. And we'll bring in the application. I can close that, COM95. Select port COM95, hit the button, and we've got comms. We'll see if it talks back. Yep, it's working. Thanks for watching.